Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, welcome to my channel. It is time for my best and worst makeup of 2018 video. It's been a crazy year, not one of my favorites to be honest with you. So I'm so glad that it is now the new year and 2019 and I'm so ready to leave everything in the past except for the good makeup, of course. <laughs> also, I did wanna quickly mention that I am trying out new lighting. I got new lighting for Christmas. I feel like it's blinding me. So hopefully it's not blinding you guys too badly when I'm sitting in front of these glass drawers. I need to play around with it. I might need to buy a dimmer for it or get like a more dim bulb because I feel like it sometimes makes me look like I'm not a human being um, and blows me out. But anyways, I'm so ready to start talking makeup with you guys. I'm going to start by talking about products the way I would do my full face of makeup. So I'm gonna start with primer and then foundation and then concealer and kind of work my way from there. So if you guys wanna see the makeup that I have loved so much in 2018 and then also at the end, some products that didn't work out for me so much, then just keep on watching. So first up, there was actually only one notable primer that has been new to my routine that I actually fell in love with this year, and that was the Milk Makeup Luminous Blur Stick. So this is a very interesting product because it blurs your skin, but it also gives you some luminosity. And so I love that they managed to pull that off in a product. I feel like that is something that I have not seen before. So basically this fills your pores. It makes your skin look really smooth, but it also has a beautiful, slightly golden hint to it. So it gives your skin a little bit of shine as well. So this is gonna last me forever. I have barely even made a dent in it and I've used it all the time this year. I've used this a lot over on my Instagram this year. I've really been doing a lot of Instagram tutorials, so I'm so glad to say that this has made it into my best of 2018 video. I think it's my only primer that blurs pores but also gives me luminosity, so I love this. So this year I don't have a lot of foundation to talk about because my skin has not been reacting the same way as it did before. So my Fenty foundation has kind of fallen off even though I still like it. My skin's kind of used to it. I feel like that happens when you use something for a really long time. And also I need to better shade match myself so a lot of my faves have kind of been sitting around because I'm not as tan as I was in the past few years. But all of my foundation favorites from my previous videos I still love, like the Hourglass Stick, the Fenty, and the Too Faced Born This Way. But the only one that I've really worked into my routine and used religiously this year was from Bare Minerals. This is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Performance Wear Liquid Foundation, and mine is in the shade Warm Natural 12. I'm wearing this today as well, and what I love about this is you can build it up so you can either have a very light natural looking coverage or you can really build it to like a medium coverage. This really holds up throughout the day. It hasn't broke me out and it's been one of my ride or die products so I did want to mention this little foundation. I feel like not a lot of people talk about this but if you are looking for like that more natural coverage but something that still is going to make your skin look flawless, I would definitely try this out. So this year for me has been the year of concealer. I swear most days I will just wear concealer, which is why I don't have a lot of foundations to talk about. So I do have a ton, a ton, a ton of favorite concealers, but I wanted to narrow it down to two of them that really stood out to me that have been in 2018 become my favorite, not like a forever favorite. So the first concealer to come out and really blow me away this year was the Born This Way from Too Faced. It is the multi-use concealer. So I definitely have been using this for multi-use purposes. I use it for my foundation. It is a very full coverage product, so I will dot just a little bit around my face and use it as foundation. I also have the darker shades, so I will use it to contour, and of course, it is amazing as concealer. So underneath the eyes, this does not crease on me, but it's also very full coverage, so it will cover my freckles if I want a more full coverage day. And it also reacts really nicely with the powder that I like to use. So this has definitely been up there. It is one of my favorite concealers of all time. And a lot of people ask me if I like it better than the Shape Tape, and I definitely do. The Shape Tape is kind of obsolete to me now. I have a lot of concealers that I like way, way better than the Shape Tape. 
And then this second concealer I don't think will come as a surprise to you guys. It did release later in the year, but it has been a concealer that I reach for every single day because of my personal issues with under eye bags. So this is the Huda Beauty Overachiever Concealer. The cooling tip of this kind of flattens out my under eyes. It helps get rid of my wrinkles. It wakes my eyes up before I put the concealer on and blend it in. And also it works flawlessly with the next product that I'm going to mention. And I have talked about this combination before. I feel like this concealer works really, really well with my favorite powder of 2018, but on its own, it's still such an amazing concealer. Mine is in the shade Cotton Candy, and this is the one that I'm currently using to brighten up right directly underneath my under eyes. So the powder that has really stole the show for me is from Cover FX. It is their Perfect Setting Powder, and it's in the shade Translucent Light, and honestly, I suck at describing why powders work for me, but basically, for some reason, with the Huda Beauty Concealer, I get the most flawless, flat, non-creasy, non-cakey under eye, and I've talked about this combination before. This is weird for me. It's not like it's a new product or anything, but it was sitting in my collection, and one day I decided I wanted to test it out and see if I like it, and it kind of like took my under eye game to a whole new level. So the Cover Effect Setting Powder is something definitely I don't think you should sleep on if you have not tried it yet. Of course, there are so many amazing powders on the market, which is why it's hard to move off of one once you've found something that works for you. But I feel like with my dry skin and the wrinkles under my eyes, this one is, I don't want to say hydrating, but less drying than some of the other ones that I have tried in the past. So I know these videos can be a bit repetitive because most of the products I have talked about on my channel, but this product is one of them that I don't think I have talked about, but I've used every single day behind the scenes. So this is the MAC Studio Fix Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette. Mine is in the shade Light Medium, and I have been using both the contour and the banana powders in here. I like my bronzers and I like my contour, so once I find something that works, I don't change it up very often. So it was hard for me to move off of my favorite Bare Minerals trio, but once I did, and I think again, it comes from the Instagram videos, trying to find new and exciting products to try in those videos. I tried this and I decided I was going to move off of it for a while and test this out and I'm so glad that I did because I have fallen in love with it. It's not too dark for me, which is something I think I need to come to terms with. I'm not the most tan individual anymore, so the lighter contour shades are a little bit more suitable than like a super dark brownie orangish color. So these are nice and now, I wouldn't say ashy, but they're more cool tones, so it looks more realistic on my skin. So the next category that I have is blush, and I decided I was going to narrow it down to one blush because I'm a blush whore. Blush is one of my favorite products. I have a whole drawer in this unit behind me for blush because I feel like blush takes your look to a whole new level. I am obsessed with learning about new blush techniques and just... Blush is probably one of my favorite products to go looking for and to try out. So if you guys have a favorite, leave it down below. I've probably asked you this a million times because I just love finding like a new ride or die blush and I'll use them until they're gone. Like I hit pan on blushes, which is so weird, but I have one notable favorite for the year and this is the Jouer Blush Bouquet and mine is in the shade Adore. I love that they are a duo product so you can use one side or the other or mix them together. With the Adore Blush Bouquet I mix them together and it just creates the most beautiful like barely pinched cheek look and I am wearing it today. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it with my new lighting and everything but I just feel like this is such a suitable blush. I feel like it is very universal like it would look good on anybody it might be too light for like the deepest of skin tones but I feel like it's just such a beautiful universal color it looks good with any eye look and I feel comfortable throwing it on really quickly and leaving the house so I've been loving these the only downfall I have is that one of my favorite shades which was I don't remember I, I want to say it was like 
Nectar or something like that. It was a more coral looking duo. I can't remember the name, but mine shattered and I feel like they might shatter a little bit too easily. So I don't feel comfortable traveling with this and that's the only downfall because I like to have my favorites with me when I travel. But the packaging is stunning. The concept is beautiful and I really, really enjoyed these blushes. I have all of them except for the one that I shattered, which is really sad. They also have bronzer duos that are really, really nice, but I haven't used it enough to kind of include it in this video, but this is definitely a best of 2018 product. Next up we have highlight, and this was very, very, very hard for me to narrow down because I could talk about highlighters from the drugstore to high-end all day long. So I have one drugstore and one high-end to talk about. You guys know my die-hard favorites are the Artist Couture and the Ofra highlighters, but I have mentioned them in both my 2017 and 2016 favorites videos. So you guys, that's a given. So I have two this year that I have reached for from different brands that have really blown me away and the high-end one is going to come as no surprise. I, I doubt anyone will be surprised but this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Amrezy collaboration highlighter. And this is definitely something that could be worn on any skin tone. It's a beautiful universal champagne and I just love the waves in the product. I should be showing you guys everything close up so you can see just how much I use the product. I know people will use theirs way more than me, but like as a YouTuber who's constantly going through different products, that's pretty heavily abused if you ask me, but not as much as the next one, which is a drugstore highlighter that I have to talk about. So if you are ever on the hunt for the perfect icy pink fair skin highlighter, look no further than your own drugstore or Walmart because this has been heavily, heavily used by me at my fairest of moments. So here is a close-up of the Molten Rose Gold Highlighter from Maybelline. As you can see, I have dipped into this quite a few times this year. But for my ladies with fair skin, even fairer than me, like porcelain skin, this is the most gorgeous shade, so please try it. Now this year on my channel has been the year of eyeshadow palettes. I feel like so many of them have been released this year and it's hard to keep up with. So I do have four eyeshadow palettes that I want to mention in this video that have really made me happy this year. I've been happy to dig into them. They are you know, very me palettes, but they are for different seasons. So I have a summer, a fall, and then two year-round palettes. I will start with the summer palette that has been very, very fun and exciting for me. This is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Thirsty Palette. I know, I'm actually talking about a colorful palette, that's crazy. But the mix in this palette just makes me so happy for summer. I love dipping into like the yellows and the blues and there's also some neutrals in there for me of course and beautiful metallics. I have an entire review up on all of the eyeshadow palettes I want to talk about but this one, the formula, the color, and just the way it makes me feel has definitely been a favorite for this year and it is my favorite palette I believe from Jeffree Star Cosmetics so far so I hope he does something similar to this one in the future. Maybe next summer we can see another version of this and have colors and metallics and neutrals just everything again because I was obsessed with this. Next we have my shocking favorite of the fall that I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about before and that is the Urban Decay Naked Cherry Palette. This is what I have on my eyes today. For some reason the tones in this palette just bring out my eye color. So I have like hazel hazily green eyes but when I wear this they look much more green instead of brown which I really appreciate. So again whole video is up on this palette. It just kind of shocked me how much I enjoyed it and it does look a little boring when you're looking at it at first but the colors are just so different. It's such a different kind of neutral. The cranberry and maroon shades in here are just way more stunning than I ever imagined they would be. So I am definitely in love with the Urban Decay Naked Cherry. Still have not stopped using it which says something about me. <laughs> and then lastly for the palettes are my boring palettes you guys. You guys know I love my neutrals. So I have the Anastasia Soft Glam. There's an entire video on it. 
and the Anastasia Saltry. Also an entire video on it. The Soft Glam was really, really beautiful for the first half of the year. I was obsessed. It was the perfect spring palette. It reminded me of Bridal Glam. My best friend got married this year and I was all maid of honored out this year and so I was constantly thinking about things that are wedding related and so this is the perfect bridal palette if you ask me and then later in the year of course we had the holiday palette which is the sultry palette. The sultry palette is a bit more cool toned. It has some more metallics that I really enjoyed and as always I've got your back when it comes to the Anastasia palette reviews if you want a more in-depth explanation but they are all, all these palettes are at the top of my list this year. I could not narrow it down to one. Quickly, I want to talk about mascara because it has been years since I have found a mascara that actually blows the L'Oreal Telescopic out of the water. And so the best mascara, hands down, of 2018 was the Hourglass Extreme Caution Mascara. This thing is out of this world. If you have trouble with clumping or if you have trouble with the smudging on the lower lash line look no further go buy a small one or get a sample or whatever you need to do before you invest in this expensive ass mascara i am not looking forward to repurchasing it it is a high-end expensive mascara but when i tell you it's worth it it's the best high-end mascara that i have ever tried and i just wasn't expecting it it kind of just shocked me but it's amazing. It's my favorite formula on the market. Mine is almost completely dried up. It's not that super wet formula that I don't enjoy. It's just so, so good. It's not the most lengthening mascara in the world, but it's so thickening and it just doesn't smudge and it's the blackest of black mascaras. So I love, love, love this if you guys were wondering because I have not used my telescopic. I need to repurchase it actually, which is kind of what forces me to try new products sometimes is when I run out of them. So I have run out of this. It It's on its last leg. So I need to purchase another one. I do have a drugstore favorite, which it's a fan favorite because I tweeted out what you guys thought the best makeup was of the year and I tried this in December. So it's not like I have been loving this all year long, but because I'm running out of that other one, I decided to try this and I love it. So this is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise Mascara. The wand is fatter and the formula is a little bit more wet, but it's still not like that dripping wet formula that you hate in a mascara. So I've been enjoying wearing this on days where I'm not wearing false lashes so that my lashes look like I'm wearing false lashes. And it's in the drugstore, it's affordable, so I did want to mention it because it's a really, really great mascara even though I discovered it in December and I'm really late on the bandwagon. <laughs> so next up, I wanna talk about liquid lipstick really quickly. You guys know my two favorite formulas are Ofra and Jeffree Star Cosmetics. I have a discount code for Ofra if you're interested. My code has changed, which is why I'm mentioning it. The code is now Kendall. So if you want to save money, use the code Kendall. My favorite from Ofra this year is actually a deeper nude and it is the shade Manila. Um, I'm going to give you a swatchy of all three of these. Don't mind my self tan, please. So here is Manila from Ofra. A very similar favorite is Celebrity Skin from Jeffree Star Cosmetics, which has definitely made it into one of these videos before. But still, I've been wearing it like every single day. And so it's a little bit deeper than the Ofra one, but it is right on par. These are two of my go-to deeper nudes. And then when I am more fair or feeling feisty like today, because I am wearing it today, I love the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Skin Tight. Unfortunately, I only have a mini of this one. I need to purchase the full size because this is running out right before my eyes right now but this is skin tight, so it's that pinky light nude. So those are by far the best formulas and best nudes for my skin tone that I have been wearing religiously this year. Now I love to play around with lipstick, but I know myself and I know I always go back to brownie nudes, pinky nudes, and just nudes. So I am mentioning nothing but nudes in this video. And then something happened this year that I never thought would happen but I actually discovered a gloss that I am beyond obsessed with and 
it is the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bombs. So I have the one in Diamond Milk and I have the new one in Fussy. I love both of them. I still need to purchase the original one, I know. But these are just the most amazing formula and smell and packaging in a gloss. I cannot believe that I'm that obsessed with a gloss, but they're both my everyday glosses. So I have this one on my desk and then this one in my purse and I'm always reaching for them. On no makeup days and full glam makeup days, I have been loving the Fenty Beauty Gloss. So I wanted to wear skin tight today because I wanted to show you guys what the gloss bomb in Diamond Milk looks like over top because that's my favorite combo. My camera is definitely about to die, but let me slap on some of this Diamond Milk. So that right there is Jeffree Star Cosmetics Skin Tight with the Diamond Milk over top and it's been my favorite nude lip combo so I really wanted to share that and the Fenty Gloss is the only one that I've been reaching for this year so I had to mention it because I'm not usually much of a gloss person but I'm back at it and now I am. <laughs> so thanks to Fenty for some die hard products in my life and I cannot wait to see what else they come out with. So last up on my list of the best makeup of 2018 is a product that I actually included in an anti-haul because I thought that I was going to hate it. A lot of people said that this spray was sticky and I disagree. And so eventually I've seen so many people use this product that I purchased it myself just for the heck of it and I fell in love with it. So this is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist and this does not make my skin feel sticky at all and what I love most about it is that it is continuous and so I will use this just to fix my makeup after my makeup is completely done. It helps take away the cakiness, it makes your skin look more luminous and it sets it for the day. I love that you don't have to worry about a bad mist on this, you don't have to worry about getting big splashes of the mist and ruining your makeup. It's nice and and fine and continuous and so I will use this I'll spray my face before highlight after my face is done I'll also spray it if I'm feeling lazy on my beauty blender to kind of wet it and so this has been a product that I will definitely repurchase and that I was surprised by in 2018 and I'm so glad that I decided to buy it even though it was in the back of my mind as a product I didn't want to purchase so even though there were a ton of products that I tried and loved this year, those were the ones that I continuously reached for that have made like my elite list, if you will. And now it's time to talk about the products that did not work so well for me this year. So the first product I really tried to like, I really did. Um, I love the packaging, I love the concept, I love that it's affordable, I don't love the product. So this is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Body Luminizer. It was the first PR package I ever got from Wet n Wild and probably the last because I put up a video that wasn't, you know, the most raving <laughs> of their product. But this is in the shade Heart of Rose Gold. It's the one that would be most compared to the Fenty Body Lava in Who Needs Clothes, which I still wish I purchased even though it's ridiculously overpriced. So first flaw is that it separates really, really badly, which kind of just gives me the feeling that the product was not heavily worked on because there are many many body glow products that don't separate like this it reminds me of a DIY because my DIYs separate like this it's a powder thrown into a liquid essentially yeah so here's the issue once it settles it settles so I wouldn't want anybody to waste their money on this because this is just poor product creation. Like, who thought of this? So you shouldn't have to continuously go back in your collection and shake a product up in order for it to be good. I didn't even like it that much on its own when it was all mixed together, but I shouldn't have to go get like a professional centrifuge machine to get this to mix back up. It is not mixing back up. I don't know if you guys can tell. Ooh, look at that. It's like it's a solid 
at the bottom. <laughs> and then the last product I have to talk about, I actually don't have with me because I threw it away for multiple reasons. I did not like it, but I also dug my thumbnail into it on accident and the product broke. But I think it's obvious if you guys have been following my channel that I really did not like the Nikki Tutorials highlighter with Maybelline. It was not a collab but it was inspired by Nikki or whatever they said about the collab. I thought that that highlighter was way below Nikki's potential because her highlighters with Ofra are amazing. They are blinding. It's an amazing formula. So I know that her name was on the packaging. It's not on the product. It's not supposed to be her highlighter, but that highlighter in specific is a no-go for me. It was really, really chalky. It gave you that effect of having like a streak on your face. It did not look natural. I feel like it was for more than just me being too dark for it at the moment. I just think the formula was not up to par with my favorites from Maybelline, especially not this rose gold one, which I feel like would have been more suitable for somebody with Nikki Tutorials skin tone than the one that she allegedly came out with with Maybelline. I think I got very lucky. I purchased and received products that I was very comfortable with this year. So maybe I'll go out of my comfort zone and try some things that I, oh, actually, I do have one honorable mention of sucky product. And that stamp crease from this year, it broke immediately. It did work, but it didn't cut my time in half or anything and it was a waste of money so I hated that also. So that is it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for being so supportive and uplifting and positive on all of my platforms this year in 2018 and I'm just so thankful to have you and I hope that you all have an amazing start to your new year. I hope that 2019 it's gonna be our year you guys. I can't wait to see what this year brings. And if you guys have any products that you want to talk about for the best and worst of 2018, if you think I missed anything or you love anything, then leave it down below. I love hearing your suggestions and I love having conversations in the comments with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from me, then don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And hopefully I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye.